Another tool for helping you understand the timing of a shift is to practice the finger pattern of the passage, but without actually shifting. Think about it. If one shift you play takes you from first to third position, but another shift in the same passage takes you from first to fifth, and the tempo is the same, that shift has to travel almost twice the distance, and so it will have to be twice as fast. Neurologically, this is actually pretty complex stuff. To help you understand how the finger pattern will change and at what point in time you have to be already in the new location, I like to practice the non-shift finger pattern. Let's look at an example. Let's go back to Mozart Third Concerto. All right, so in the middle of that first bar, we have an upward shift, right? Shift up on one, place two. Okay, it can be tricky to get there cleanly, so I take the finger pattern, three, one, high three, one, high two, four, and I do it all in first position. It sounds like this, just for practice. And then I'll put it back in context and try to see if I can have that same feeling with my finger action, but tuck a shift in between. Let's look at another example. This is from Mozart Fifth Concerto. Okay, so in that particular example, again, there's kind of a slur two pattern. Um, it's Mozart, so you like to be clean. There's an extra challenge, which is that at the end of the bar, you're on four, and then you have to shift, you have to get past that fourth finger to one, right, slowly. And to practice the timing of that, again, I'll transpose everything with the finger pattern, the whole steps and half steps, into first position without shifting. It sounds like this. Again, that teaches me neurologically, how is it going to feel for those fingers to be coming down at that rate? When are they going to touch? But just without the shift. Now I'm going to try to put it back into its original form. And then, of course, you integrate it back into the whole passage, maybe into a page, maybe into the whole piece. You